If you use spreadsheets every day in your marketing practice, you already know SQL. Take a second and look back at all the stuff you've learned to work in spreadsheets. You basically already have all the fundamentals of being a technical marketer down. You already know how to work with formulas, how to work with data and tables, how to visualize that data. That's really the meat of what being a technical marketer is all about. You're just doing it in spreadsheets. The problem is, spreadsheets are really only good for working with small data. So I'm here to tell you that it's time to put down your spreadsheets and move into databases like BigQuery. It does basically the exact same things that you're currently doing in spreadsheets, just at infinite scale and infinite size. Ultimately, what's important is not what tool you use. Spreadsheets, databases, whatever the next thing that'll come out next year is. But what you can't substitute for is the contextual knowledge that you've picked up by actually doing your job. Your expertise is far more valuable than any individual tool. Let's walk through a few examples of analyses that we do in spreadsheets that we also do in SQL, so you can see kind of compare and contrast how are they different in Sheets versus a database. For SEO, for example, we do what's called a website quality audit. In this, we join together a bunch of different data sets, Google Analytics, Search Console, links from Ahrefs, a crawl, all that stuff, right? The bottom line is you're combining a bunch of data sets and the, the key work to be done is joining them all together. And we've done this a lot in spreadsheets. You put each into a different tab, and then you use VLOOKUP formulas to join them all together. This can really grind your sheets to a halt if you're working with anything over 10,000 pages. Trust us, we've gone through the pain on this. Now in BigQuery, it's not really that much different. Instead of using a VLOOKUP, we just use a JOIN statement to join all of those tables together. SQL can handle that data size, no problem. So for that SEO audit, Often what we'll do is generate action recommendations, kind of next steps to take for each page on your site. Now doing this in Sheets, we use an if statement. So we write a really complex nested if statement to say, if traffic is this, then do this action. If statements can nest, they can get really nasty. And you know this if you've worked with if statements in Sheets before. So we use an if statement in Sheets. In SQL, we do the exact same thing, except we use case statements. Case statements are just much, much easier to read. They have the same you know, if, when, then type of logic as an if statement does. So if you can learn an if statement, you can learn a case statement. So those two themes, joining data together, and having some type of tag in your logic, themes that you'll see repeated throughout any type of data analysis that you're doing. And if you can learn those methods in Sheets, which I think you probably already have if you're watching this video, you can learn those same methods easily in SQL. The fundamental reason why I really recommend making this jump now is that the tools for getting data into a database like BigQuery have gotten so much better over the last couple of years. So now you have tools like Stitch, Fivetran, Funnel, and even our own tool, query.recipes. The table stakes for getting into this game have just gotten a lot lower. The amazing thing about getting all of your data into a database and working in SQL is that in Sheets, you generally have a kind of siloed approach. You copy some type of template and you use it individually for each site that you work on. But in a database, you get all of your data across all of the sites or projects that you're working on in one database, in one set of tables. You can actually realize this faraway dream of spending less time wrangling your data in spreadsheets and more time actually analyzing it. You might be saying, okay, that's wonderful, but how do I actually get started learning SQL. The first thing to do is work on a data set that you use every day, and preferably that you already have this kind of data analysis process figured out in spreadsheets. That way you already have the raw data picked out. You already have the kind of formulas, what's the, the frosting, how do you put it together, and you already have some kind of visualization that you want to end up with. So to take your process in sheets and port it into SQL, you want to break down three things. 
And what you can do is swap out those three pieces one at a time. So first, how are you getting the raw data into BigQuery? Are you gonna use a tool like Stitch, like our recipes tool? Are you gonna use Funnel? Are you gonna use some script that you, a developer on your team already wrote? The second thing to break down is, what are your formulas in that analysis in your spreadsheet doing? Are they joining data together with VLOOKUP? Are they applying if statements to do some type of tagging on the data? Do you need to run just averages and counts and sums? You know, basic pivot table of arithmetic that you used maybe a pivot table for in Sheets. What do you need to do in SQL to match the job that you're doing in spreadsheets? And three, how are you going to present it? Ultimately, it's really about hot swapping. Where are you reading that data between Sheets and your database. Your end visualization ideally would look exactly the same no matter where the data is coming from. I'm here to tell you that if you know spreadsheets, you already know SQL. So why not go for it and start working in databases? Ultimately, having SQL on your resume will boost your hourly rate, your salary, however you get paid. I guarantee it. To dive into learning SQL in BigQuery and actually getting started with building your BigQuery data pipeline, we'll have a bunch of links in the description here.